meet our first potential fooler. I'm Matt Marcy, and I'm a comedy magician. I always wanted my magic to be more than just a series of tricks. And so I created a stage play. Opening night, I looked out in the audience, and Teller was sitting there. I never met him before. And after the show, I chatted with him for quite a while, and he gave me great thoughts and advice. I wanted to go a step further, and so I created a web series about a magician. I'm a magician. Oh, OK. What instrument? The purpose of the web series was to explore magicians as human beings. Magicians will be looking for success. That's how Chris Angel made it. They'll be looking for love. OK, magic boy. And they'll see that through the lens of magic. A magician is first a person, and he wants all the things that every person would want. Our next act puts the F in funny and fooler. Please welcome Matt Marcy. Thank you very much. You know, I'm normally a comedy magician, but because this is Fool Us, tonight I wanted to do something a little different. A giant, over-the-top, Las Vegas-style grand illusion. What do you think? OK. Uh, I've actually brought four with me. I only have time for one, but I'm going to let you choose the one I do. And to make that choice fair, I made this simple poster. It says, the trick that will fool Penn and Teller will be A, B, C, or D. Penn, you get the choice. Uh, C. C. Very good choice. Very confident. Let's see what you didn't pick. You could have picked A, and tonight I'd be performing for you the appearing Empire State Building. Oh! The Empire State Building vanishes from New York, appears right on this stage. It doesn't even fit, but it's magic. <laughs> but that's nice. Could have gone with B. That was uh, one of my favorites. That's the levitating shark. Uh, a 2,000 pound great white floats around, eats three people. It's spectacular. And D, I was hoping for D. D was the, uh, the deadly double bullet catch. Oh, nobody figures that out. <laughs> but you picked C. Okay. And that is why I was hoping you would pick. It is my favorite one on the, the most spectacular illusion I know. Get ready, because tonight I'll be performing for you a card trick. <laughs> Excellent choice, Ben. Love card tricks. I brought a deck of cards. Jumbo decks we can all see, and I, I should be honest, I love card tricks, but card tricks used to be simple, right? You would pick a card, the magician would find it, very easy. Lately, I have seen these complex card tricks I can't follow, so tonight, I will do the opposite of that, and I will go create for you the world's simplest card trick. And I have simplified it the way anybody would, with a clear and concise PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the world's simplest card trick. Now, I should begin by explaining that of magic tricks, card tricks make up 62%. It's actually, it's actually a bit odd. You can see from this graph, as the number of card tricks go up, the quality of the magician goes down. <laughs> However, according to this graph, as the number of graphs go up, the quality of the magician goes up, so I'm in good shape. <laughs> Here's a few more graphs of that statistic in case you miss it. There it is in 3D. <laughs> Now, of those tricks, 99% uh, are bad card tricks. Really, only like 1% of card tricks are any good. But this trick falls right about there. Right there, yes. <laughs> of those tricks, 79% are the pick a card or the PAC card tricks. 18% are the no card selected, the NCS tricks. And only 3% are the most difficult kind, the think of a card tricks. That's what we'll do tonight. In a minute, somebody here will T-O-A-C. And uh, Allison, would you mind helping? Sure. In a moment, I will ask you to T-O-A-C. OK. Very good. <laughs> now, it would appear that Allison has a free choice of 52 different cards. Actually, we've done studies. We found that women tend to choose red cards, men tend to choose black cards. Kids, of course, choose the Joker. Please don't choose the Joker, no. Joker. Also, two very popular cards. They don't want to influence you. They can be chosen if you would like the Queen of Hearts and the Ace of Spades, but they are very common choices. Uh, a lot of women choose the Queen of Hearts because it represents love and beauty and, of course, decapitation. Remember her? <laughs> then we have the Ace of Spades for the guys because it represents strength. It's known as the bullet card, which is weird because a spade is a shovel. It should be known as the gardening card. <laughs> But it's not, it's known as the bullet card. Not to be confused with a bullet point, that looks like this. <laughs> so, Allison, for the first time, would you please T-O-A-C, think of a card. Um, nine of clubs. The, the, the T, the think, oh. is key for this to work, yeah. Sorry. So forget the nine, think of a card. Yeah. Got one? Now I do. Very good. Now, change your mind, C-Y-M, to any other card, A-O-C. 
Okay. You got a new one? Yeah. Good. Allison, in your mind, IYM, turn your card face down, FD, and visualize the back of the card, the BOTC. Okay. Can you help these are the rider back cards? They're made by the United States Playing Card Company. Of course, they were founded in Cincinnati, Ohio. If you haven't been there, here's a picture of Cincinnati, courtesy Google Maps. <laughs> Let's review. <laughs> so far, I asked Allison to TOAC, then she CYM to AOC. I went to turn the card FD and visualize the BOTC made by the USBCC from Cincinnati OH. Okay? Okay. So, Allison, for the first time, name the card you're thinking of. Eight of Clubs. Eight of Clubs. And that's your card, the one that I went to turn FD. Mm, sure. Excellent, Allison. Well done. In this deck of cards, there are 52 cards. They are all facing in one direction. However, I am, in your mind, you turn a single card FD face down. So one card somewhere in there should be reversed from all the rest. And they can be tough to spot. If anyone sees it, let me know. Oh, I see it. One card is turned over in the deck. Now, Allison, if that is the Eight of Clubs, would that be a good trick? Yeah. Definitely. That'd be a freaking miracle, Allison. I know. There's no floating shark. This is it, okay? Yeah. Yeah. You had a free choice of 52 cards. You randomly picked the eight of clubs. And I told you, this isn't just any card trick. This is the world's simplest card trick. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. That must kill at conventions. They love it. Everyone loves it everywhere. We've yeah. all suffered through PowerPoint. It doesn't just have to be corporate stuff. Everyone has been through these slideshows. That's yeah. the best PowerPoint ever. So entertaining. Th thank you. Yeah, right? and thanks. And funny and, yeah. And there's a card trick. So, so how did you come up with this idea? Well, I like to wrap my magic in, like, presentations that people can relate to and connect with, and I always thought PowerPoint was one of those things. Yeah. So it made sense for me to do that. And all of my stuff is comedy magic, but it's all tied in with stories. So stories about my life, stories about people I know, stories about things I've experienced. Uh, I actually developed a, a stage show and a, and a web series about a magician that's all story-based and mixes magic and storytelling. That's always been sort of what I'm most interested in. That's cool. All right, let's All right, go to let's the see boys, see if they figured it out or not. Oh, Matt, you know, Teller saw your show in L.A. You have a one-man show in L.A., and Teller saw it. As soon as he saw you come out, he was thrilled. Oh, He was you. already over the moon, and I, I hadn't seen you before, and it's just killer, just so great. I mean, I, I could not be more sick of TED Talks. <laughs> I believe that uh, oration in the United States of America has been destroyed by PowerPoint. Uh -huh. I think they're the yeah. worst things in the world. And the moment when you brought up the Google map of Cincinnati, one of the, one of the great, really funny things. Uh, and the uh, basic rule with comedy magicians is they're never that funny and the magic's never that good. And uh, you, you just proved both of those. It was funny Thank all you. the way through. You even need a trick. And you also... Uh, you also prove something that, uh, that we like to say all the time, which it really is the singer, not the song. Uh, you did just, just a beautiful job and just tight and crisp and funny and brilliant and wonderful. And now it's time to ID this with the UMD. <laughs> 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 it's a variation of an ID. It's a UMD. Was that, Fair enough. Was that code? I think they're onto the sorcery. Oh, <laughs> yes. All right. Well, thank you <laughs> so much. Thank you very much. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.